Hello and welcome to this talk about the recruitment and retention of transgender staff. It's guidance for employers, but it'll be of interest to a wide variety of other persons as well. My name's Declan O'Dempsey. I'm a barrister from Cloisters Chambers. First of all, it's important to uh, understand what is meant by the term transgender. It's a person, let's call them T, whose gender identity doesn't match the gender they were assigned at birth. So T may undergo the process of aligning life and physical identity to match their gender identity. This is known as transitioning. T has the right not to be subject to unlawful discrimination because of uh, gender uh, reassignment or gender identity. In law, and have a look at pages 20 and following in the guide for these uh, rights, a person is entitled not to suffer direct discrimination, indirect discrimination, harassment or victimisation. In relation to uh, transsexuals in particular, uh, section 16 of uh, the Equality Act 2010 says that T has a right to have time off work for reasons relating to T's gender reassignment. An employer will discriminate against T if they would treat another person who's absent from work due to illness or injury more favourably. Now these rights apply uh, in, primarily to those applying for a job, those in a job, and in certain situations after a job has finished. If you're a public sector employer, you must remember you're also subject to section 149 of the Equality Act, which uh, is the duty when exercising any of your functions uh, to have due regard to the need to eliminate discrimination, harassment, victimization, and any other conduct prohibited under the Equality Act. Uh, this will include discrimination by association or perception you have a duty to have due regard to the need to advance equality of opportunity between persons who share a protected characteristic and those who don't, and to foster good relations between persons who share a protected characteristic and those who don't. And in the case of gender reassignment, uh, this last set of uh, obligations may be quite important. When does the protection start? Now, the law is set out in Section 7 of the Equality Act, but perhaps a better place for an employer to look would be the Equal Employment uh, Statutory Code of Practice published by the Equality and Human Rights Commission in 2010. Have a look at paragraph uh, 2.21 and following, because this gives you an idea of how the characteristic of gender reassignment is um, to be handled. So it will cover people who are proposing to undergo or are undergoing or have undergone a process or part of a process to reassign their sex by changing physiological or other attributes of sex. Um, if they are doing that, or have done that or will do that, then they have the characteristic of gender reassignment, which is a protected one under the Act. And a reference to a transsexual person is a reference to a person who has that characteristic of gender reassignment. So it's important to understand that gender reassignment is a personal process involving moving away from one's birth sex to the preferred gender, rather than a medical process. So the reassignment of a person's sex may be proposed, but not gone through with. The person may be in the process of reassigning their sex, or the process may have already happened previously. It may involve undergoing medical uh, gender reassignment treatments, but it doesn't have to. The protection arises while and after that process is gone through or when somebody's proposing to go through it. Looking at that more closely, the Act requires that the person should have at least proposed to undergo gender reassignment. It doesn't require the proposal to be irrevocable. 
so people can start gender reassignment but decide to stop it, they will still be protected under the Act having the characteristic of gender reassignment. There's also protection where, as part of the process, they're driven by their gender identity to cross-dress. However, this is not going to apply where somebody chooses to cross-dress for some other reason. The employer doesn't have to know about um, the uh, gender reassignment status for the employee to be protected. A worker who's proposing to undergo gender reassignment or is undergoing uh, transitioning may want to discuss their needs with you as the employer. This will be so that the employer can support them during the process. Many people who have realised that they are in the wrong gender for them uh, experience a condition uh, known as gender dysphoria. Now if, if a person has been diagnosed as having gender dysphoria or gender identity disorder as it's sometimes known, and if that condition has a substantial and long-term adverse impact on their ability to carry out normal day-to-day -day activities, they may be protected under the disability discrimination provisions of the Equality Act. However, it's important to remember as an employer that somebody who is transitioning or proposing to transition may well not uh, wish to identify uh, with that uh, category. So th it is important to keep this aspect or potential aspect of any individual's case quite separate from the issue of uh, whether or not they're being treated less favourably, for example, as a result of their gender reassignment status. The Gender Re Recognition Act uh, 2004 provides that if uh, T holds a gender recognition certificate, T must be treated according to T's acquired gender. So the Equality and Human Rights Commission points out that transsexual people shouldn't be routinely asked to provide their gender recognition certificate as evidence of their legal gender. Such a request would compromise a transsexual's right to privacy apart from anything else. If you require proof of a person's legal gender, then the in, it'll be a new birth certificate uh, should be sufficient confirmation, but the birth certificate uh, should be sufficient. More generally, about the around the question of retaining uh, gender reassignment staff, if you have a culture of dignity and respect, you're more likely to retain trans staff. Also, clear and consistent leadership. Um, it is going to be central to the workplace response to transition and this should be positive and supportive. Um, a value and respect of all individuals, if inculcated into the employment culture, will again make sure that dealing, dealings between uh, employees and T uh, are not uh, difficult. Um, you should think about how you address um, problems. Management standards, addressing problems as they arise, uh, should be uh, encouraged. Communication processes really do need to be thought about. The, there's a balance to be struck between openness uh, and conf confidentiality. It's not enough simply to make statements about the culture that you want and inclusion, diversity and equality and, if necessary, human rights training for all staff um, will be what establishes the organisation's culture. Once you have set those standards, they help to maintain uh, the standards you've set and it allows all staff to be themselves at work.